<laughs> Good girl, see. Hello guys, happy Sunday. Welcome back to another video. Um, today is Sunday, November 5th, and I just filmed like a little bit of our morning this morning. Um, that's typically how things are looking. What time everything goes down changes almost every day, but um, that's pretty much how the morning goes. Like we wake up, I feed her, David makes some breakfast and brings me some kind of caffeine and um, change her, swaddle her, put her down. And once she's down for like her first nap of the day, that's when we eat, have coffee. I, every single morning, try to tidy up our bedroom just to have like a fresh start for the day and it feels like nice and clean. And I do my skincare, brush my teeth and try and put like something other than pajamas on. And doing all of that like really helps me feel a lot better and just feel ready for the day and then in the morning or afternoon we have been going for like half mile today we did a mile walk because I am feeling a lot better um and then come back and like by the time she wakes up and feed her change her do the whole routine over again and then anytime she's napping we're both doing stuff around the house or we're having a snack or lunch or whatever so that's what we did today I have a lot I want to cover because I did a little like Q&A on my Instagram story. Um, if you're not following me, on, following me on Instagram, make sure you do that. It's always linked to the description box. Um, just asking if anybody had any questions about like baby must haves or labor and delivery or just basically like anything. So I wanted to go over that stuff now. Um, I'm trying to think if there is <clears throat> anything I didn't cover in the last video. Anyway, we'll, we'll just start here and this will probably like, uh, you know make me think of other things that I wanted to talk about but some of the questions that I got let's see okay someone said is motherhood everything you imagined it would be so far anything unexpected motherhood is I think better than I expected it to be don't get me wrong these first few weeks she's gonna be three weeks this week um have been have probably challenged me mentally more than anything else in my life because just like that like literally in a minute you have a whole new person a huge responsibility so many new things that you're learning with the breastfeeding and sleeping and how to swaddle and how to bottle feed if you're going to do that how to pump how to like bathe them correctly how to like you know just just take care of them like you're taking care of a whole new person that you don't know <laughs> you have to learn everything about them and each day you learn something new and you get a little bit better um so it's a challenge but like not a negative challenge it's very rewarding I know every parent says that but it's so true I love being a mom it feels very very natural to me I just feel like I transitioned into it pretty easily not to say, and like I said in the last video, that's not to say that I haven't had some breakdowns and tears and frustrations because again, you're learning like this whole new job like that. Like there's no training period. You know what I mean? There's no like course that you're taking. You can take all the courses, you can do all the research and trust me, I did. Um, but until you're in it, actually doing it, like it's just hands-on learning and that can be hard, especially with again, hormones and um, like in my case, I was recovering from a pretty intense C-section. I do encourage you guys, if you have not seen my labor and delivery vlog, to watch that before you're watching any of the newborn stuff because um, I'm a totally different person now than I was in that video and you will not be able to fully grasp you know, what I went through and what David went through and Murphy went through until you watch that video because my labor and delivery was pretty traumatic. It was very intense. Um, I had severe preeclampsia. I had to be induced when that was never my plan. Um, I had 
two epidurals and a spinal tap because the two epidurals weren't working. I had to have an almost emergent C-section. Also, my C-section is different than a normal C-section. So normally in a C-section, there's just one horizontal cut on your uterus. Um, well, I had to have a T cut, so they had to go up vertically on my uterus, which is pretty rare. They don't do that very often, but she had to be pulled out breech because I pushed for three hours. Um, and because of that type of C-section, I can never have a vaginal birth. And I will get into this a little bit deeper, but there is a huge chance that Murphy is going to be our only baby. I'll come back to that. Um, yeah, just that vlog will give you way more insight to <laughs> what happened and like how we got to where we are now. So is motherhood everything I expected it to be? Yes, and then some, and it feels so natural and comfortable to me, and I love being a mom. Like, I love it. Um, are you glad you guys waited, I think, eight years or so to have your first baby? Absolutely. Um, we have been together for nine years, and yes, I am so glad that we waited. We got engaged after three months of knowing each other, and we were married legally um six months after we met so we like really didn't know each other and we were super super young 22 23 and um having all these years without kids really gave us time to get to know each other and to like learn about you know learn about our communication and we traveled a lot we had a lot of alone time a lot of days laying in bed sleeping in watching movies we like got all of that out of the way before having a baby and i think that's super important everyone's path is different if you dated your par your partner for a long time before getting married then you probably already went through like a lot of the growing pains but we <laughs> had to go through it like in our marriage and it took us like a few years to get into like a really good rhythm and then another few years of just like traveling and moving and like building our lives because we were young and <laughs> you know um so yes i am super glad that we waited and i encourage anyone who's in a relationship that or with someone that you want to have a kid with make sure you do like all the things travel get a lot of alone time go on a lot of dates and just hang out and like really really be on the same page about what you want for your future like your career and for your family how you want to raise your kids make sure that the person you're with like is a good communicator and is empathetic and all the things you need from your partner to be able to be like a good mom and a good partner yourself. So, yes, the answer is yes. I'm so glad we waited. Um, breastfeeding tips plus how you prepared. Did you take a class? I did not take a class, but the benefit of being in the hospital for a week is we had access to OBGYNs, pediatricians, lactation consultants, um, and nurses that came in every single day to answer all of our questions and do like hands on teaching me how to breastfeed. So I ha I worked with two lactation consultants in the hospital for a few days and the nurses also knew how to help me. Um, we had one nurse that we absolutely loved and if she's watching this video, she knows exactly who she is. Um, we had a lot of nurses that we really liked, but we like really connected with this one nurse in particular and she was so 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 helpful i was on a medicine um like i was on magnesium after recovering from the c-section and it really m makes you out of it like i was not myself the first couple of days and it's all really blurry to me which is pretty sad because those moments i would have loved to have a clear head for when i was me meeting murphy but um, I needed that because of my blood pressure, I'm pretty sure, or the preeclampsia. Um, I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it totally puts you out of it. So, like, there were times where, like, the nurse would, like, hold my boob and, like, David would hold Murphy's head and I would just, like, have to lay there and, like, let them, like, um, basically let her, let her breastfeed with their help. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, she was super helpful and, like I said, the... The benefit of being in the hospital that long is we got like hands on help with everything. And if I would not have had those um, lactation consultants come in and really help me, I'm not sure that I would 
be thriving with breastfeeding right now because it's really hard. Breastfeeding is super challenging. Um, Thankfully, she breastfeeds really well. She latches really well, even though she does have a tongue tie, like it hasn't affected her at all. Um, but breastfeeding is frustrating and breastfeeding is really challenging. And you're spending about 12 hours of your day sitting with, you know, a baby on your chest. And for me, a person who likes to get stuff done, it's really hard for me to like sit there for a long time. And then when she gets overly tired, she gets super frustrated and she won't latch anymore and like gets like purple. She's screaming so hard. And like when you're tired and it's in the middle of the night, those are the times where breastfeeding is like a challenge. Um, I have started pumping so that David can give her a bottle. So the past two or three nights, he takes like a late night feed around like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And that has been a game changer for me last night with the time change too. I ended up sleeping for like five hours. I don't recommend that. And like, I think the pediatrician also didn't recommend that because you, I should be like pumping and I meant to get up and pump, but I was so tired that I could not get up and I kept falling back asleep. Thankfully my boobs were fine. They were just like really full and then she fed it and I pumped um, and everything was fine. But like you really shouldn't go that long because I think you can get like clogged ducts and like mastitis. Is it mastitis? Um, yeah. Anyway, that's been super helpful though. Um, having him be able to take one of the feeds so that I can sleep a little bit longer. That has been a game changer for me when that happens and we go on a walk and I make sure to like take a shower and do little things to take care of myself throughout the day. I feel so much better. Um, so that's been a game changer, but I do highly, highly recommend working with a lactation consultant if you can either in the hospital or after because they teach you like how to position them correctly, how to like hold your boob correctly, how to express milk to like get them going, especially before your milk comes in. It's really mentally challenging to like keep going. Um, but once your milk comes in and you know how to do all those things, it's pretty simple. It just can, it, it's challenging, you know? So, um, because she's also learning too. She's only three weeks old. So we haven't like, we've gotten to a little bit of rhythm. She gets better each week. Um, and I know that it will continue to get better. So someone said, tell me what is something you need from friends and family? Um, I just think like checking in and if you have a friend or family that's, um, just had a baby going through like postpartum, it's really easy to check in, you know, the first few days in the first week, but then people start to like fall off. And I think it's really important to like stay consistent with checking in like once a week for months, honestly, for the whole kid's life. And I know I could be better about that now that I am a mom. I'm like, damn, I have such an appreciation for all the moms that I know and like much more respect for them and wish that I would have been a little bit more involved and a little bit more on top of checking in and like just being there, like giving them a call and making sure that everything's okay. I think just being consistent, like I said, it's so easy to check up on a new mom when everything's like brand new and exciting and they just had their baby and they just got home. But after that first week, like the mom is still doing that every single day of her life. It doesn't change, you know? So it's being consistent with check-ins is super important. Favorite postpartum and breastfeeding products so far. So I have the Spectra, I think it's the two. Everything will be linked in the description box. All the things that like I have loved will be linked below. Um, so I love my Spectra pump. I didn't even start using that though until this past week. So the first couple weeks, like you really don't need anything, but like um, a couple onesies that fit, we use and still use the swaddle blankets from the hospital. Like we love them. They literally swaddle so well. And she doesn't do very good with the swaddles that um, don't like scrunch up her feet a little bit or like hold her feet in tight because then she ends up like lifting them and waking herself up. So we put one of those on again, those will be linked below. They're like by Kia babies. They're on Amazon. Um, and then we'll do like one little swaddle blanket from the hospital, just these. Um, and you can get these on Amazon too, like the same print and everything. They're honestly amazing. They're just a hundred percent cotton and they swaddle so well. They're so easy. We have like 
<laughs> I think like eight of them. Um, so for the first week, like diapers, we get ours from the Honest Company. Um, again, just order them on Amazon. Wipes, swaddle blankets, and like burp cloths. And I talked about these in my last video. Also will be linked below. They come in a pack of 12. They're just like muslin cloths. We have these everywhere. They're the best burp cloths and like washcloths and they're just great. Um, what else? If you're breastfeeding, that's literally all you need. Diapers, wipes, swaddles, onesies. We use the Gerber onesies at the beginning because she wouldn't fit into anything. She's just now starting to fit into a couple of her zip up onesies and the burp cloths. Did I use anything else? No. Um, for myself, I use this Earth Mama nipple butter. Um, I'm pretty bad about putting it on consistently because my nipples are already like, you can't do anything to them. You can't hurt them at all. They're like already so like tough. Um, and like I, I haven't really had any pain from breastfeeding, but when I remember where they feel like a little bit raw after I've like nursed and pumped, then I'll put this on. I also use a little, um, koala baby care it comes in this little pack uh silverettes for my nipples and i've really been loving this liquid gold supplement for breast milk it optimizes breast milk production um and i just take this like when i have a meal um two capsules three times daily i just take it like once or twice daily or like when i remember um i've been loving those things also this belly binder i just got it from amazon I'll link it below. I really like it. Really cinches you in and it feels like super supportive. What's other postpartum stuff that I like for myself? Oh, my nursing bras. Loving those. Again, they'll all be linked. And I will highly recommend to you, if you're going to be breastfeeding, to buy yourself a ton of oversized button-ups because it's just the easiest thing to get the boob out, put it back up, or like button up pajamas, everything button up and everything oversized is fabulous. Um, and then you're gonna want a lot of pads and you're gonna want some big old granny panties. Again, I'll link all that below because also a lot of the stuff is on my postpartum list. Those are postpartum things that I've been loving for myself. My Stanley, uh, my liquid IVs, lots of snacks. Make sure you have tons of snacks. I've been really into the sweets. So I've been doing that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for myself. Um, someone said, are you ever afraid of not waking up in the middle of the night? That's my biggest fear. So this is actually a guy asking this. And if you're a mom, that is not a fear because every little peep you will wake up to. But David doesn't wake up. He only wakes up to her like screaming her head off. And even then we'll be in bed right next to him and it takes a while and sometimes he won't even wake up. And I know that's like a super common guy thing to like not wake up to the baby crying. He does not wake up to her crying. Um, I have to like kind of nudge him and then he'll get up, but he's not waking up to her crying. Maybe if she was sleeping on his side of the bed, it may help a little bit, but um, I wake up to everything. I think it's a mom thing. It's just like, we can't fully go to sleep. And we hear everything and our hormones are crazy and then my boobs start hurting because they it's like triggers <laughs> me needing to feed her. Um, yeah, but he does not wake up to her crying every time. She has to really be going for it for him to wake up out of a deep sleep. Okay, last question. Most important question. Sorry, this is already so long. Baby must-haves. So I went over the stuff that you need like when you first come home and then obviously you need your stroller and you need your car seat. We have the Nuna stuff and if you're going to get the Nuna stuff, definitely, definitely budget for the bassinet um, that we that you saw in the walk this morning. We use that bassinet every single day when she naps downstairs and for our walks. Absolutely buy that. It is worth every single penny. And she's still so small and has so much room to grow in it. Amazing. Um, portable sound machine. Also the hatch rest with the charging pad. Um, this thing. Definitely amazing. You need that. I love that I can like just take this anywhere. I can put it in her bassinet like in the corner at night. Absolutely love that. 
Um, again, these muslin cloths, the Angel Care um, baby bath, the baby thermometer, Loving the Hello Bello and Honest Company lotions, body wash, shampoos, diaper cream. Um, also get yourself little spray hand sanitizers to put like next to your bed, put by the changing table, put downstairs, put in the diaper bag. Those are so nice because I was like, oh, we'll just go wash my hands after. But sometimes if I'm holding her, I can't like, if I'm alone in the middle of the night and she, I can't put her down because she's gonna start fussing. It's much easier just to like coat my hands and hand sanitizer really quickly after a diaper change. Um, so hand sanitizer everywhere. Also, now that we are doing like a bottle a day, um, we're really liking the small Lansano bottles. They're supposed to, they are designed for breastfeeding babies so that they don't get like nipple confusion. So far, so good on that. Loving the Philips Avent, um, pacifiers she loves them too it's not causing any problems with breastfeeding or bottle feeding or anything um and she can still she's not like dependent on them she just likes them for like some soothing and then you she falls asleep and you can take it out um the honest company diapers have been great um some zip up onesies from old navy my mom got like three of them when she was here because nothing was fitting her because she was so small. So it was like the Gerber baby, um, just the classic white onesies, those were fitting her. But I wanted like some zip ups and I have a ton but they're just too big right now. So my mom got some like zero month um, zip up onesies from Old Navy and those are all she's wearing right now. We got three and we're like cycling through because that's all that fits her. Um, I love our changing pad and um the little change like the cover that goes over it we're using that a ton what else we're we using a ton um oh our baby brezza bottle sterilizer amazing super easy the oxo tot drying rack um the attitude uh bottle wash we also have another one i can't remember the name of it but like um yeah the attitude bottle wash is really really good Oh, we are loving our little hooded towels from Amazon for her baths. And then there's this other blanket that I'm pretty sure was in the clip of us on the walk today, like that brown kind of waffle um, material blanket. We use it every single day, like we, for when she's in her car seat or when she's in that bassinet and it's like so cozy and stretchy and thick and like just really, really cute. Um, the baby Frida no sucker. I talked about it in the last video. There is like a baby Frida um, like kit. It comes with like the, I think it's like the windpipe thing. It's like to help with like gas, the no sucker, um, the little like cradle cap, uh, little scrubby to get off, you know, extra like, like dry skin or whatever. And then there's something else that comes with it that I can't remember, but that little kit is great. My nursing pillow, this is great to put in the front for her to lay on, but it's also nice to put like behind my back because when you're breastfeeding you want to be like as vertical as possible and that's the best way to get like a good latch those are i'm pretty sure that's everything that i've been using like we've been using consistently um yeah there hasn't been anything that i put on my list or that i bought that i don't think that i like i won't be using um the only thing is the bottle warmer it's not a necessity if your baby will drink like a cold bottle then you absolutely don't need that's kind of a waste of time especially when they wake up starving and they're screaming um you want to get that bottle in their mouth as soon as possible so that's just kind of like a preference thing if your baby will not drink cold milk then keep the bottle warmer but you can also just like put the bottle under really hot water or in a cup of hot water um it's not that's the only thing that's like eh we didn't totally need it but i'm glad we have it yeah i think that's like all of my baby must-haves as of now and then I can update you guys in the future. But yeah, this is a very, very long clip. That's a lot of information. Um, but I wanted to circle back really quickly. I'm not gonna get into crazy detail about it, but um, as far as like how my C-section went, like I said, I will not be able to have a vaginal birth. And due to having that vertical scar, there's more of a chance for 
like implantation to happen within my scar which if I were to get pregnant again and it would it would immediately be a high risk pregnancy and I would have to talk to fetal maternal medicine or whatever and like those doctors to come up with a plan um, for it to be safe as possible but it would be high risk and the potentials like the potential things that could happen throughout the pregnancy um we're just not sure if it's worth it like i would be putting the baby's life in danger i would be putting my life in danger and the whole pregnancy would be super super stressful and would have to be monitored the entire time and i i just don't i don't know that we can have another baby it's not something we're thinking about at all right now but we may revisit it in a couple of years and talk to the specialists and stuff but without getting too deep and going into too much detail we're probably just gonna have murphy because it's super super risky for me to get pregnant again i'll leave it there um maybe in the future i'll go into more detail but it's not how i saw our lives going um, we always wanted to have two kids, so I'm just trying to wrap my head around a new life, basically, and picturing, yeah, just a whole different life, because I saw it going a different way for forever. I wanted to have two kids, and it doesn't look like that's going to be in the cards for us, so I'll leave it at that. Um... Only because at some point people are going to be like, oh, when are you guys having another one? We would love to have another one. It's too risky. And I just, I don't think that that's going to be able to happen for me, unfortunately. And I never in a million years thought that this would be an issue that I'm having. But yeah, looks like Murphy's probably going to be an only child. And, you know, that's okay too. And I'm so happy to have a happy, healthy baby after such a crazy birth experience. This is so long. I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't know how much more this video is going to be because this was such a long segment. Um, but Murphy is down for a nap right now. She's downstairs with dad watching football. Um, and I'm probably going to go have some lunch. I need to fold some laundry, maybe start some more laundry and just kind of do some things around the house before she wakes up again. And it's already 4.30. No, it's only three. I forgot the time change. So yeah, hopefully that covered a bunch. I'm probably going to edit this and be like, oh, I missed this, isn't that? But that's mom brain for you. I tried to cover as much as I could. But again, everything will be linked below. And I have a bunch of stuff on my Amazon storefront. Yeah, I will potentially pick up my camera here in a little bit um, or pick it up to close <laughs> the video out because this is so long. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go grab a snack and I'll see you guys in a bit.